Salvete omnes. It's good to be together again. Let's start with a little recitation of our fourth declension. Okay, let's. You can look at your grammar book if if you want to, um, or you can just say it with me. Stop it, rewind it, say it again till you really have it known. Okay, R let's go. Portus, portus, portui, portum, portu, portus, portuum, portibus. Portus, portibus. Okay, good job. Remember, most fourth declension nouns are masculine. Okay, so now I want to go through a couple of things. Okay, just as kind of reminders. Okay, and one of the things I want to remind you about is that um, your verb and your subject have to agree in number. So if you have a singular verb, fidet, you have to have a singular subject, okay? So here's an example of something that would not work, okay? Homines videt, okay? So we see this word homines, okay? It's the first in the sentence, we want to make it the subject. And indeed, ace could definitely be a nominative plural subject ending. But if you look at the verb, you see the verb ends in T. That makes this verb singular. So therefore, you have to have a singular subject. And this noun is plural. Okay? So this sentence cannot read the men see. Okay? So remember, ace can also be a direct object ending, accusative case. So you would need to find your subject in the verb, he sees the men, okay? And this is going to happen a lot, okay? Here's another one. Let's just say we've been working with, this is one of our new words, impetum, okay? Oh, let's do fecherant, okay? And now, this verb ends in NT and it's plural, but look at this. This word is singular, impetum, okay? So it cannot be your subject and it's also in the accusative case, you probably know that. So you, again, have to get your subject here. They made an attack, not the attack made, okay? So make sure that you have the same number in the verb and in the subject because okay sometimes these silly romans would do something like this impetum romani fecerant okay and we always want to make this first word our subject but if you look at the endings um E, and then your verb ending is NT, okay, you know you have to have a plural subject. This is singular accusative. Ah, here is your subject nominative plural. The Romans made an attack. So they are not always going to put that subject in the first slot. Wouldn't that be nice if they did? So remember, Latin's all about stems and endings, okay? So you've got to look at those endings, okay? So now, Okay, I assume that you, as part of your study of lesson four, you read exercise 67. This is um, a nice story, okay? It's called Chedes Christianorum, okay? The slaughters of the Christians, okay? Or the slaughter of the Christians, okay? And I want you to follow along. I'm just gonna read it to you in Latin, okay? And I want you to see if, as I read it to you, you can translate it. I might not do the whole thing just for the sake of time, but I think you'd be surprised at how much of this you're going to understand without even translating it, okay? Post Christi Adventum Lux Veritatis in Mundo Erat said Romani Amici Christi et Veritatis non erat. Christiani autum amici Christi errant. Errant.
Ant multi Christiani in Imperio Romanorum. Erant in Portibus, et in Obidis, Provinciarum, et in Silvis, et in Montibus. Erant in Exercitu, et in Equitatu, et in Senatu. Erant servi et milites, erant matres et patres, gali et romani. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Okay, keep looking at it. Okay, and we're going to translate it now and see how you did. Okay, after the arrival of Christ, the light of truth was in the world. But the Romans were not friends of Christ and of the truth. However, the Christians were friends of Christ. There were many Christians in the empire of the Romans. They were in the harbors and in the towns of the provinces and in the forests and in the mountains. They were in the army and in the cavalry and in the Senate. They were slaves and soldiers. They were mothers and fathers, Gauls and Romans. Okay, so how did you do? You could stop this right now and now try to read it again. See if you can translate that just without looking words up and see, you know, see how fluidly you could do that. Okay, I do want to look at the first three words of this. Okay, and these first three words are post Christi Adventu. Okay, so remember how we mark prepositional phrases, we kind of go like this. Okay, that helps us not to use any of these words as subjects or direct objects. Okay, but I want you to notice something right here. So this is your preposition. This is your object of the preposition and here is your genitive and they do this a lot in prepositional phrases they split the preposition and the object of the preposition and drop the genitive right between them so don't think it's after christ okay remember it's all about the endings okay and post takes the accusative case so that's why adventu is the object of the preposition and not Christi, which is in the genitive, after the arrival of Christ. So I just wanted to point out that that happens a lot in prepositional phrases. They, they break the preposition, the object of the preposition, and drop the genitive right in the middle. Okay, we need to go on to lesson five now. So get your composition notebooks out and start taking notes. Okay, fifth declension. And by the way, fifth declension is mostly feminine, okay? So, you know, we always say mostly. So, I write 5B, okay? Fifth declension is mostly feminine. Now, our model for fifth declension is going to be the word race rei, okay? Race rei. Now, what's really surprising about this word and I don't know why Henley chose this particular word as the model word, but if you take off the genitive singular ending EI, you're going to notice that your stem for fifth declension is the letter R. Okay, so that is a little bit surprising. So let's make our declension chart. We'll go singular, and then of course plural, and write your five cases down. We always wanna write them down just to keep them in our mind ordered, okay? Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. Okay, I'm gonna draw some lines to help me stay ordered. All right, here we go. Always take the first one, put it in the nominative singular race okay take the second one put it in the genitive singular rei okay race rei now i'm going to put my stem and i've already told you the stem is a letter r so i'm just going to stick that letter r i just think this is so funny that you would have a stem that was one letter okay 
race, re, e, re, e, rem, re, okay, race, re, room, re, boost, race, re, boost. Mm, I wonder what letter this declension is known for. Hmm, that's right, E, it's our E declension. There's an E in every spot, okay? Now this word means thing, it means a lot of things. Actually, this is such an interesting word. Um, in, in this book, um, let me see, I know so many different meanings. Okay, Henley's gonna say it means thing or affair, matter, business, I mean, but thing or affair are, are the two that you have to remember for this particular textbook, but just know that it does mean other things, okay? Um, so anyway, here you go with um, race ready. I do want to look at the vocab a second, okay? So now we're on to lesson, uh, p lesson five, page 62, okay? So you have res rei, thing of fair. You have fides, fidei, okay? That's faith, reliability, faithfulness. And now you have aties, achiei. Now this is what's interesting about this word, okay? So if you take the stem off this word, uh, that it, you're, scratch that. You wanna find the stem. So you're gonna take the genitive singular ending off, which remember is ei, okay? you are going to have aches, achi, e, e. Okay, your stem is A, C, I, okay? What that does is it causes the accent to be in a different place on the word, and you're gonna notice that the macron is gonna shift. Okay, so what you're used to, um, let me go back up here. So we're used to, in this one, that the macron is gonna be on the I with the word achi, ace, Achi et e, okay, right there. Now, all of a sudden, you have two macrons happening there. Okay, so that's a little bit different that I don't want you to be confused about if you're paying attention to macrons. Okay, so some people do, some people don't. Um, it just gets a little bit, a little bit tricky. Um, don't forget your grammar book. The declension of race right e is right there in your grammar book. Okay, and you have. These words, fifth declension just doesn't have that many words, so you're not gonna encounter very many of them. And again, most of them are feminine, okay? Um, so this chapter is only two pages long. I kind of love this. It's like, <sighs> a little break in the midst of it. Okay, so you're going to be working on all these exercises, okay, for lesson um, five, okay? And then, um, let me see. Okay, I want to just talk about exercise 74 for one second as you get ready to do that. So they're going to say give the genitive plural and the rule for hostis, virtus, homo, and gens. These are going back to third declension words. They're trying to figure out if you remember whether a third declension word is I stem or not. Okay, so remember, you're going to get your nominative and genitive. Then here are your two rules to remember if the genitive plural is going to end in I-U-M. We call that the I stem. If the nominative and genitive singular have the same number of syllables or the stem of the genitive singular ends in two consonants, then it will be uh, I stem and the genitive plural will be I-U-M. Remember, you can look back in your grammar book to help you with that. Okay. And then... Um, exercise 74 part 2 says give the gender and the gender rule for these words. Now I just want to review all the gender rules now that we have all five declensions. Okay, so here we go. First we have, our first rule is NG, natural gender. If it names a masculine or feminine being, it's masculine or feminine due to natural gender. Okay, that is always the first rule we want to apply, okay? Then we're gonna go on to our declensions. First declension words are mostly feminine unless they name a masculine being according to Roman times, okay? 
Nauta, Naute, sailors were only men, okay? Then we have second declension, U.S. nouns are masculine, okay? And we have second declension, U.M. nouns are neuter. So that means in the nominative singular, U.S. is masculine, in the nominative singular, U.M. is neuter. This is like servas, bellu, okay? Then we go to third declension. Hmm, we have three for that. So third declension, socks rule, remember is feminine. That ends in S, O, or X in the nominative singular. It's feminine. We have 3D error, okay? Those are gonna be masculine if it ends in E-R or O-R in the nominative singular. It's going to be masculine. And we have 3D lancet are gonna be neuter. If it ends in L-A-N-C-E-T, they'll be neuter like flumen. Okay, then last time we had fourth declension words are masculine, okay, unless they're an exception. And today we got fifth declension words mostly are feminine. Okay, so they want you to take like homo, okay? Let's just do the first one. What is the gender and gender rule of homo? Well, I know that that word means man, okay? So right away I go to this first rule, oh, natural gender. That's masculine, okay? And the rule is natural gender, okay? So you'll go through the rest of those doing the same thing with these, okay? Valete discipuli.